<laughs> All right. Our Father, which art in heaven, how we praise you for this day, dear God, because you are our God and King. And we celebrate you, Heavenly Father, not only during the season, but every day, Lord. But today we're going to celebrate you uh, because you have come and you have dwelled. You dwell not only with us past tense, but with us right now. And we celebrate that fact, dear God. And we look forward to studying your word and applying it to each one of our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, saints, we are beginning a new study today. It's called Irrefutable, Irrefutable Prophecies that Point Us to Jesus. And this morning, we're going to be talking about God with us. Uh, but there are five other lessons that I'll speak of quickly, and that is the light in the darkness, the Savior who came to us, the King who begins forever, the light and the glory of God. And then uh, our final lesson will be the ruler who cares for his people. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Yes, he does. You know, saints, I hope you came to, to worship this morning because that's how I want us to start out as we talk about God with us today, as we look at Isaiah and as we look at Matthew. And one of the things that that I uh, uh, appreciate, and I know you do too, is gospel music. Sometimes within four minutes, the, uh, the gospel music can deliver a message that it, I can't quite deliver in 40. <laughs> and so I, I want to, uh, 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 I, we're going to play a song right now. I'm going to play it all the way through and, and, and put your, you can put your, uh, put it on mute. Because if you want to sing along with him, sing along with him. If you want to raise your hands and praise him, it's a song we sing at Bethlehem. But I, but I, I thought it was a great way for us to begin the study today. So uh, uh, let's 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 hear Norman Hutchins talk to us, sing right. to us. Down the road in your car, sing this to the Lord. You'll get where you're going much faster. Come. Let us come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him, kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Deep. Come on, say it again. Come, come. Let us come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him, kneel down before him. Worship and adore He's my 
saints let's worship him today in the word yes. as we come together to study god with us That's you know good. i received a special gift it was a birthday gift it was a christmas gift uh i heard you know i'm gonna just call it what it is my grandson preach a message mm. at his home church Dang. this past wednesday <laughs> And I had been studying this lesson. Yes. And essentially what he said as he talked about some difficulties that he has gone through as he gave his testimony hmm. is he knows that God is with him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm Amen. telling you, saints, there's no better gift right. than to receive that. In, right. in fact, I had just been reading uh Luke the second chapter that day and I and I did like Mary I just pondered in my heart <laughs> God's goodness yeah and, and and how he had blessed me like he had blessed those old saints hmm. to see the Savior and, and and he blessed me to see my grandson <laughs> to say the things that he did for the Lord Amen. it was Lord. great saints Yes, because Lord. that's what this lesson is about today. Yes. And I'm so glad that he realizes that at a young age. Yes. That God yes. is with us. Amen. No, no matter what we're going through, and we've gone through a lot already this year, but he is with us. Amen. So let's talk about it this morning as we look at Isaiah 7 and 14 and Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now, before we read the text, the first part of the text, I want to give you a little background. Maybe, maybe you did not uh, look at the first part of the chapter before 7 and 14. And I really want to go all the way back to, to, to Isaiah 6. And that's a familiar passage of scripture with us. And, and y'all, I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but I think it's, I think it's important because Uzziah had, had died. And it was after Uzziah had died that Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up in the temple, saints. And, and I'm telling you and, uh, that there are some things that we can learn from that because there's some things that need to die in our life before we mm -hmm. see them. Amen. Come on. <laughs> and it died in Isaiah's life. And Isaiah was a great prophet. He was the prince of prophets. In fact, in the New Testament, he is quoted more than any other Old Testament prophet. He's mm -hmm. quoted, I believe, about 21 times is what I have found in, in, in my study. And, and in this passage of scripture that we read in Matthew, he, uh, it's Isaiah that he, that he quotes. Well, Ahaz was the king. 
And Ahaz was a wicked, wicked king. Ahaz, uh, he sacrificed his children on the altar. Uh, he went in and he stripped all the gold from the temple and he sold it. Now, why did he sell it? He sold it for this reason. There was a confederacy that was going on between Syria and Israel, the northern kingdom. And they had decided that they were going to come against uh, Judah, the southern kingdom. And uh, what he did, the reason he sold the gold in the temple is because he wanted to buy some soldiers because he was afraid of what was going to happen. And, and, and so he went to Assyria, who was a, a, a power and, and a great power in that day and time before Babylon. Assyria is before Babylon. And, and he wanted to hire some soldiers there to protect him because he was fearful of what Syria and Israel were going to do uh, to him and his nation. And he, he felt like he was going to lose the lineage that it would no longer exist. And so God came, to, sent his prophet. He sent his prophet Isaiah to him. This is important in our lesson, saints. And he had a message for him because he said, listen, you can choose any sign that you want to choose. Amen. And, 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 and you, know what, you know what he said? Uh, I don't want to choose a sign. And you know, that's unfortunate. There are people like that in our lives, saints, people that we witness to. You know, I, people talk about, uh, man, the people in Paul's Valley, uh, y'all go out into the highways and hit, and I'm not criticizing that. But, you know, there's a lot of people I've talked to in Paul's Valley, and there are some people who will not be compelled <laughs> to come. I, I'm not hating saints, and that don't mean that I have to stop, and I won't stop. <laughs> But there's some people who just refuse God and say, hey, listen, God, because I don't want to change. And because you may have to change something in me, I refuse to change. And that's the way Ahaz was. And he said, hey, I don't want to hear it. Well, God said that I'm going to send you a sign anyway. And that's where we come to in our lesson, where he talks about the sign that he is going to send to Ahaz. And let's pick up right there. And I want somebody to read Isaiah 7 and 14, please. I will. All right. Thank you, dear. Okay. You're welcome. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know, saints, as you know, I'm an expositional teacher. I believe in walking through the scripture. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a way of studying the scripture that I would encourage you. Uh, and, and ours is already printed for us. Uh, but, but some say, write it out. Write out the scripture. Write it out verse by verse. And then after you write out the verse, make some observations. And that's what we're doing in our Sunday school class. I, when I ask you questions, is so is to help us to think and for us to make some observations about the scripture that we've read. And then we want to conclude by applying it to our lives. The acronym is SOAP. And then we want to pray. Over it. We want to pray and ask God to show us and to help us. And we always end our Sunday school lesson with praying to that effect. All right. Amen. And so let's, as we look at this text, what sign from God did Isaiah announce? Conceive. 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 A virgin is conceived and then bear a son. Right, right. And his name. his name shall be called. Amen. 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 All right. Let's talk about virgin first. Let's talk about virgin. And that's important to us as Christians because it's foundational to our faith. Amen. You know, we ought to talk about it, not just at Christmas time. <laughs> we can talk about it anytime because 
some, somebody asked the question, what do we lose if, if, if we lose a virgin birth? And somebody answered that question and said, we lose it, we lose Jesus. That's it. Mm. Because there's no foundation for who he says he is. It makes the Bible a liar. That's why it's important what we're studying today, because the Bible is not a liar. <laughs> Let every man be a liar. But the Bible is truth, it says in Romans 3, 3 and 4, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, because the Bible is truth. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people in our society that have bought into that. I want to give you some some uh, what you may think are some it is to me some startling statistics. Now, the statistics I'm going to give you it was, was given by uh, the University of California, Berkeley, a liberal school granted, and they studied Christian uh, or this belief about the, the virgin birth. And uh, only 69% of Baptists believe in the virgin birth. The uh, United Presbyterian, uh, uh, no, the Lutheran, 66%. The United Presbyterian, 57%. In fact, I, 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 I listened to one of their bishops when we were at a service with them say that, hey, that there's nothing to it like there was nothing to the resurrection of Jesus. Isn't that sad? That's the oh. day and time that we live in. Episcopalians, 39% believe that, that there, there's nothing to the virgin birth. The Methodists, 34%. Y'all, that, that, that's some reason to change. If, if people, if they don't teach that in the church, and I'm so glad I attend a church <laughs> I worship as a church where they teach the word of God. Amen. But 34% don't believe that. Congregations, 21% don't believe in that. And, and, and you know, Jesus asked the question of the Pharisees, son. And, and uh, you can find this in Matthew uh, 22 and 42, I believe is where it's found. And, it's, and, and he asked the Pharisees a question, what think ye of Christ? He's talking about himself. And he asked the question, the second question he asked, whose son is he? Because that's important. Mm. That, that, that's important. And it's important yeah, in our that. study today. Yeah. Let me give you one more statistic that I'm, I'm very happy about. And I believe it's, uh, uh, well, let me give you one more that's kind of, kind of sad before I get to the, some good news <laughs> about that. Um, it, there are the younger people those less than 30, more and more and more are discounting the teaching of the virgin birth. And I know I'm talking to people that teach their children about the virgin birth of Christ, because it's not about Santa Claus, is it? No. <laughs> Amen. One of the most important things that we can teach our children is that this is real. Amen. Amen. It, is not, it is not fictitious. But here's the good news. Those same studies, they say that 90% of African Americans believe that the virgin birth is true. Wow. Hey, I said, hello. May that never change. Unfortunately, uh, so in that age group or our young people, and there's a lot of teaching we need to do. And it, all you have to do is look around in our churches and a lot of our young people aren't even there to receive that teaching. Amen. So uh, we, we got we got some work to do, saints. Uh, let's... Uh, uh, let's look at Matthew 1, uh, 18 and 19 now as we get into the, the, the New Testament. Somebody read that for us, please. Now, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on, the wise, on this wise when it's his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I, I, I want to take you to the first part of that chapter before we get into uh, verses 18 through 25. Because, and it's good for you to read that. Some of you don't like genealogies whenever you read the scripture. You'll say, hey, when I get to the Bible, 
and I get the numbers and they name and all those genealogies, they don't mean nothing to me. Well, you know what? This is one genealogy for sure. They mean something. And in the Bible, God don't put stuff there because it don't mean anything. Right. It means something. And so the first 17 verses, uh, you, you know, let's, let's, what's, what's that source where you learn about your, your, uh, uh, what people you come from? Ancestry.com. Ancestry. Well, God goes to Ancestry.com <laughs> right here <laughs> to prove a point <laughs> in verses 1 through 17. And, and, and what is the point that God is trying to prove, prove in that geneal genealogical record that he makes in, in Matthew 1, 1 through 17? What's his point as he speaks through Matthew and speaks to us? There's a purpose in that. Oh. Jesus yeah, what, what does that genealogy mean in Matthew 1, 1 through 17? What's God's purpose for recording that in Scripture? What were you saying, Auntie? I think she was answering. Oh, okay. All right. To show that David's household was established and would reign. All right. And that Jesus, Jesus Bless Christ, is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and he's he legally he is in that and 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 and, and is a part of, and, and that's what he was trying to teach that that dumb King Ahaz. <laughs> my it, my uh, your ancestry is gonna go on and go on well past you, <laughs> even evil as you are. Because mm -hmm. one day, hey, my son, amen, so legally, and that's the human side. He's, he's dealing with the human side because God, Jesus is 100% God. That's why this is essential <laughs> to us and our beliefs. And then when in the scripture we're about to get into, he's 100% man in, in 1 through 17, but he's also 100% God as we look at verses 18 through 25, saints. Uh, and and uh, what was the what was unique about the birth of Jesus? What was unique about it? A virgin. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, that it was a virgin birth. Yes. Uh, and and uh, there are sects, S E C T S. <laughs> that still believe that and believe that's going to happen to this day. Now, this is not a Jewish sect. It's, it, it, it has some similarities to it. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, they're called the Druze. You can look them up sometime. And, 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 maybe, and you may see the way that they're dressed. And, and let me tell you what's bizarre about what they teach about the virgin birth. Because they wear loose clothing, the men, the priests, and the priests are the only one they they they, they know about this. And they still believe that the virgin birth is going to happen, but it's going to happen through a man. Oh. Is what they teach, and their garment is so loose because they believe that one day, one of them, <laughs> all of a sudden the Messiah is going to appear will, will come through them. Okay. So, so the virgin birth has been taught for years, and there are a lot of strange things that have been taught about Alexander the Great. That was, they said that Zeus was his father. Amen. So it, it was not unusual uh, for false teachings to go on about the virgin birth. And guess who wants to promote those false teachings? Thanks. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Thanks. Satan doesn't, does not want the truth of God's word to be taught. And so he puts counterfeit out there. And unfortunately, there are people that buy into it. Let's look now at verses 19 through 25, saints. 19 through 25. And I need a volunteer to read that. 20 through 25. You want nineteen? Nineteen. And 20 through 25, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. All right, I have it. But while he thought on these things, 
Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, hmm. for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she brought forth her, for, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Amen. So how did Joseph respond to this discovery? Mm -hmm. <laughs> fear. Confused. Confused, yeah. And <laughs> upset, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Girl, ain't no virgin. What are you talking about? How you <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> uh, spectacle. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true, especially in that day and time. Yeah. Now, now Stop. speaking on behalf of all those brothers, and some of you brothers may want to speak to it too. I mean, put yourself right. in, in Joseph's shoes. <laughs> And the woman that you married, wanted to marry, <laughs> <laughs> came to you with that story. You can, you, you say, hey, I can understand how the brother would respond the way he did. Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're like, say what now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, we probably say it with a few choice words. Too, man. <laughs> this is 2021, that, that, that man. That, that default is in all of us would jump out yeah. that I talked to you about a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Exactly. But, but the Bible describes Joseph. He He's better than I am because he was, uh, the Bible described him as how? He was what kind right. of a man? Righteous. Amen. He was righteous. Wow. Yeah. He didn't think about himself first. Mm. Wow. Mm. That was tremendous, saints. Yes. Selfish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so easy for me to be selfish and get to thinking about Bill. Amen. Mm. Amen. I mean, I'm talking about with the woman that I love for mm. almost 50 years. Sometimes I can get selfish. Amen. Mm -hmm. He didn't get selfish here. And and uh, uh, he he uh, uh, he chose to go another way, did he? And yeah. and uh, why did Joseph choose the way he wanted to end his engagement with Mary? I feel why did like he choose it with not his love for her. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Exactly. Yes. He wanted to still honor her. Even, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You want yeah. to do it honorably, I should say. Because what could have happened to her? She could have been stoned. She could have yeah. been stoned to death. Yeah. Now, that was generally not a practice in that day, but that, that could have. And, of course, she could have been, she would have been shamed. Yeah. Right. Uh, publicly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, uh, he did not want this to happen to her because he did have a great love for her. And he respected her. Uh, That's uh, right. And, and so God, God had to intervene, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And how did God deliver a message to Joseph? In a dream. Mm, all right. Now, can you think of another time in scripture God used a dream to communicate? Just, the outside of this. What now? The coats. I didn't want that. Yeah, yes, right. Yes. Yeah. Joseph. Amen. Joseph. Yeah, uh -huh. good. Good, uh -huh. good example. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Elijah. I, I don't recall one from Elijah, but oh, okay. 
but it certainly was one with Jacob. Remember him? He saw oh, yeah. that ladder. Yeah. That's right. That's 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 Jacob's Jacob's ladder. And yeah. so God used that dream. And 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 Ed and I were talking about yesterday, these things that are that that put you in a plate. I forget what they call. <laughs> They're a hot seller right now. <laughs> you put one on over your face. Oh, you yeah. said his brother has one. Virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. Virtual reality. Virtual reality. But this was reality that God yeah. was taking him through here in this in this dream and this angel spoke to him and how did the angel address joseph mm. thou son of david fear not mm. all right fear yeah not. yeah y'all don't don't miss that don't mm. miss that uh, because it's easy to miss the point of him using his name like that because look how he used it look how he used it and, and i want you to remember something do you remember when you when your mama called you and she called you by every one of your names yeah. william home Boris jones yeah. <laughs> whenever mama said something like that to me i had i had to get if was, i said if i said to david david daniel jones the third amen i meant to get his attention Amen. Yes. Amen. And God's getting his attention. But but look how he used his name. He said Joseph, but he didn't leave it there, did he? No. What else did he add? Thou son, son of David. David. Woo! Amen. Yeah. Because it was through Joseph, legally, because it's through the man that the son could inherit the kingdom. And yeah. and, and so uh what the Bible is teaching us is the, is how the virgin birth is real. It, it's real. That, that's why Matthew is going through the step. It, we, we forget about a lot of this at Christmas, you know, because we forget about how, how real it was. You know, that, that, there's some Christmas carols. They're not perfectly right because it doesn't treat Jesus like he's human. Let me give you an example. Silent night. Jesus cried like any other baby. <laughs> Amen. He did. He, he he was hungry just like you and I was hungry. That's what the scripture says. He got tired just like you and I were tired. And human needs. He was a hundred percent man, and yet he was a hundred percent God. And that's what that's what Matthew is showing us through this scripture here, that he is the the Son of God. Yes, he's the Son of Man, but he is the Son of God. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and so the angels, uh, well, uh, it, now Joseph, uh, he was still fearful, wasn't he? Now yeah. explain the reason for Joseph's fear. The uncertainty of how it occurred and mm -hmm. I'm going to to be the one that's responsible for this life, you know. <laughs> right, right. Life. Yeah. And he had a reputation, didn't he? Exactly. He didn't yeah. want everybody going around saying, man, that man's a fool. <laughs> right. Yeah. Y'all know us. Amen. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's human being. If you don't believe me, you read John 8 and what, they said, the about, that, what they said about Jesus. Amen. Because they said that, that, that Mary had relationship with the Roman soldier. Now, that's not exactly what it said in that, in that scripture when you read John 8. But, but they, they called Jesus a bastard. <laughs> they did. The, the Pharisees. Amen. That, 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 that you, you came, you were born out of wedlock. <laughs> Amen. That's, that, that's, that's. That's that's who you are. Uh, so so that's the thing that he would have to put up with the rest of his days. Wow. That, that that would make you uh, fearful. See? Exactly. And and so he could lose his honor as, as a man, and he'd have to walk around with that that shame for the for the rest of his days. But he gladly did it, and because he gladly did it, he he did a one eighty. Mm. That to you ought to be proof that the virgin birth is real. He believed what the angel said. Hmm. 
and he accepted the responsibility for that life. Amen. Yeah, Amen. yeah, yeah. And and uh, what what does the meaning of the name? What is the meaning of the name Jesus? Yahweh. Yahweh. What? Yahweh salvation. Yes, yes. Yahweh is salvation. Amen. Yeah. And and because he's going to save his people from Amen. His sins. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you. Amen. That's why we celebrate. That's why we're glad that God is with us. Amen. Yes, I see it. And, and 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 then and then he goes back to the word in the Old Testament, doesn't he? In verses mm -hmm. 22 and 23. And what Old Testament scripture did Matthew quote to confirm that Jesus was God's promised Messiah? Isaiah. Isaiah. Amen. Mm -hmm. 7 and 14. Amen. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yet Jesus was more than a sign. How was Jesus more than a sign? Because he came. He did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all, that's something too. That statement that was just said. You don't remember anything else about what we're talking about. He came, amen, and he dwelled among us. In fact, you know what, John? John went beyond. Uh, you know, some people don't believe in the virgin birth because it's not in all four gospels. Isn't that ridiculous? But John jumped over the virgin birth, is as I heard Reverend Turner say one day in a sermon, <laughs> and he said the word was God. And the word was with God. So, so he was there in the in the beginning. You know, it, it says in this scripture, it, when you go back to that genealogy, it also lists Abraham. And remember uh, what Jesus said about Abraham in John 8? He said, before Abraham was, I am. And whenever you hear God, him say, I am, <laughs> you know what he's saying? That's right, John. I'm, I'm God. God. <laughs> I am the great I am. Mm -hmm. And I saw Abraham before his day. And Abraham rejoiced when he <laughs> saw me. Yeah. And so how did Joseph demonstrate his righteous character? Mm -hmm. Verses 24 and 25. How does he demonstrate? Mm -hmm. He took her to be his son. He raised up and did what he said. He said. Amen. Amen. Immediately. Amen. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He 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 didn't question it. Obedience. Immediately, he took her as a wife. And, and I want to say this real quickly, uh, as we're headed toward a close, uh, that marriage was different in that day than it is in this day, because I, I I'll take Jackie and Ed for example, and their children. Uh, the, the way they did it in that day is Jackie and Ed would select a wife for DJ. They would yeah. select a husband yeah. for Jayla. They didn't have a say-so in it. They couldn't say, oh, I don't love him. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is who this is who you gonna marry. <laughs> marriages. It was. It was arranged. And and and, and during the betrothal period, that was a 12-month period where uh, it was a test of faithfulness. And it was during this test of faithfulness that Mary showed up pregnant. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, 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 and in order to get out of the marriage, you had to legally divorce that person. Amen. It, it, it wasn't just, I'm going to get my ring back. <laughs> and you on, you go on down the road. <laughs> you had to legally go through a process, and yet he chose not to do that, and he chose to name that baby, Amen, just as he was instructed. And I love what what my sister Jay said because how is and it's worth repeating again. How is Christianity different from all the other religions? How is it different? Like she said, he came. It was fulfilled. Amen. You can read the Quran. It don't say nothing about God coming. You, you, you can read what the Buddhists say. 
about their God. It don't say nothing about no, no. God coming. All the other religions, you you march them down through there. Amen. Uh, you you uh, the Mormons, they don't say anything about that. But he didn't, we didn't come for him. He came for us. Came I for am him. so glad he looked yes. beyond all my faults. Yes. And all my needs. That's yes. why I can say, when I say Emmanuel, I'm like my grandson. <laughs> I know he's with me. I have yes. been through the valley and shadow of death. Go, yes. go through some more as well. But all the time, I can say, Emmanuel, Amen. that my God is with me. Yes. I believe that he was wrapped up in flesh and he dwelled among us and he dwells yes. in us right now. I believe that's the God that we serve, saints. And, and, and he loves me in spite of my sin. I know that that's Jesus is the only one that fits this profile that the prophets talked about. Whenever I decorate my Christmas tree every year, I love to decorate it with scriptures that foretell of who he is, and he fulfilled them all. Mm -hmm. He is the only God. That, that's, that's why he is God. That's why I believe that he does dwell among us. I believe that he is the one that John talked about that said, behold, he that taketh away the sins of the world. And you know why I know? Because one day he took away my sins. I'm not righteous because of anything I do. I am righteous because of the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. And it's on his word that I stand and I rejoice to this day and rejoice to the day that I die because I know what my Savior has done, not only for me, but for you as well. Hello. Thank God you. is with us. Yes. Not only that, God is in us. Saints. Amen. 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 Lord in prayer. And I pray that you apply this scripture this, this week. Let, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, dear God, for your word. Oh, and how we celebrate you. Yes. Because, Lord, we know that you are alive. And that you are on the right hand of the Father. And Father, I know that it's you, you left a charge with us to tell others about it, that you're real, <laughs> that your word is true, dear God. And so I pray for each one of us opportunities this week, dear God, that we might yes, share Lord. the word of God with yes, us. Yes, Lord. Because God is with us. And, and, and Lord, you want to save. You, you're here to save right now. And there are people that are in desperate need of you. I pray that there won't be any Ahazes out there, but they would accept you, Lord. They would receive you. And Lord, understand that you're more than a sign, that you are real, dear God, and that you dwell with us now. Yes, Help us Lord. to share that truth. We pray in Jesus' name, may his will be done. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, saints. All right. Let's Kick come back next week and talk yes. about the light in the darkness. Yeah. Have a blessed day in the Lord. You too.
and he's going to lead us in prayer today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. David said, Lord, I thank you for this table before me in the yes, presence sir. of my enemies. Yes, and anointed my head with oil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My cup runs over. Yes, yes sir. Security and goodness. Yes. Security and goodness. Yes. 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 Mercy to follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. I'm so grateful yes. for that. Thank you for being here today. Yes. It's been a while for me, Lord, but you need to write that with me. Yes, Amen. Right there. You promise that. Amen. Not only me, but all of us. Yes, Lord. Yes, all those who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. For this privilege. Yes. An opportunity to call upon your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for blessing me and keeping me. Yes. I thank you for blessing me. Thank you, Father. I pray for our church every day. Lord God. Uh, yes, Lord. We grew up here. Yes, sir. Being taught your word. Yes. Being preached your word. Yes. And we learned to love you. And we knew you loved us, my father. Yes, father. Yes, father. Sent your son. And he hung live and died that we may have life and have more abundance. Thank you for Pastor Lee Charles. Thank you. His family. Yes, sir. Faithful man. He's the way he want to be, apparently. Yes. The world is in a whirlwind. People are going here and there and everywhere. But he's staying right here. Thank you, Lord. For so God is here. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege, Lord. Thank you for yes. being God. Yes. I want to know about you. Sit high and lift it up, my Father. Yes. We praise your holy name because you're alone are worthy. Yes. We praise. Continue to bless our church in a mighty way. And thank you for watching over me, keeping me, and I was able to, to uh, come to church this day. Yes, Lord. Sometimes uh, uh, pain comes in, uh, in, in all kinds of places. But yes. Lord, you know what's going on, and I don't complain. I know you're able, and I know you fix it when you get ready. Thank you once again for being here today, and thank you for your word as it being Help us to focus on your word and not yes, our, our business or whatever we want to do. Help us to make a focus on God's word that, that, that feeds us, that keeps us, that guides us, and directs us. Thank you once again for this privilege. I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Ross. Our response of reading today is coming from. <coughs> Romans uh, 12 and we'll read a few verses of that, uh, of that chapter. Romans 12. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not, not conformed to this world, but, but be transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be approved with what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For well, as we have many members in one body, and all members have not, not the same office. <laughs> so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Have Having these gifts different, different according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proof of faith. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teaches on teaching. For he that exalted exhortation, 
He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kind, be kind and affectionate one, one another with brotherly love and honor for one another. another. Not sulphur in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in hope, patience in tribulation, continue in instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless, Bless him with mercy to you. Bless and not curse him. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of the lower state. Be not wise in your own seat. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, thy enemy is come, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. For he is on his he coals the fire on his head. Let us read together. Be, Be not overcome with evil, evil, but overcome evil with good. good. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. And praise the Lord. Thank you, choir, for leading us in Zion songs. Amen. We do have a right to praise him, and we also have a right to give to him. Hello, somebody. It's offering time. Oh, y'all didn't, y'all didn't say that like y'all meant it. Y'all just said you had a right to praise him. All right. It's, it's offering time. Praise the Lord. Amen. We got a right to give to him. And guess what? No rocks going to have to give for me. Amen. 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 And praise the Lord. Our giving determines what? Amen. Amen. And remember to get your uh, Lord's Supper implements this morning. We're going to have Lord's Supper. Amen. 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 Amen.
soul of the Lord on this Sunday morning. We're glad that you are here and we again thank the choir for leading us in Zion songs. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. Before you leave here today we have a survey we would like you to take. Uh, we're planning loyalty months for the month of February and we're going to have or we're working on getting bishop huggins to come in the month of february and we're going to do loyalty month uh, the month of february so we have a little survey that you can take uh, you should already have one uh, take that survey and make sure you hand it in to uh, brother maury and our Sunday school teacher is leading us in loyalty month in 2022. So please take your survey in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. We're looking forward to loyalty month. I uh, want to also encourage everyone to stay connected uh, in all of our Bible studies. Uh, we want to thank those who are in uh, Sunday school this morning, either in the sanctuary or through Zoom. Uh, and we praise the Lord because this is how we disciple. A disciple is a learner. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. And if you want to see the difference between uh, a regular church member and a disciple, uh, church uh, disciples are tougher. Hello, somebody. I say they're tougher and they can't be ran away as easy. Hello, somebody. Uh, especially during these times. Amen. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. Also, uh, the church will be fasting and praying uh, this Friday, December the 10th, uh, 2021 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Even as we're in an uncertain time, now you're hearing that word Omicron. I think that's how they pronounce it now and saying it's in 16 states. And uh, but they say uh, Delta is the one that's putting most folk in uh, the hospital. So we started fasting and praying. Uh, we're working on uh, two years now uh, that God will enable us to overcome uh, COVID-19, COVID-19 effects and COVID-19 variances. And we believe that this is how we will have the victory and keep the victory. God said this kind comes out but by prayer and fasting. And we're going to continue to pray and fast because we believe that that's what breaks the chains. And that's what's keep the doors of this church open. Hello, somebody. In Jesus' name. Um, I've been encouraging... Uh, uh, have been encouraged uh, because of my bishop to be involved in this conference. Uh, say your legacy uh, can move folk even when you're gone. I say your legacy can move folk even when you're gone. This was the one thing or the one place I did not go while my bishop was alive. And uh, I'm encouraged to follow his legacy. He preached at this conference uh, every year. And uh, the bishop invited me to come, and he's uh, actually uh, invited me to speak next year. So uh, I want you to be praying for that, and we prayerfully will be able to finalize plans for him to be uh, come to Bethlehem in February during this week. Amen? Amen, and praise the Lord. We've started a new series this month entitled foretold to foretell, foretold to foretell. And uh, this month at the Bethlehem Baptist Church and really all over, uh, people will be talking about Jesus. Churches will be talking about Jesus. 
And this month, it seems the Lord wants us to focus on the prophecies of Jesus, not only through my series, but through the series of Sunday School. Amen? So we're going to do that. But we started this series out uh, focusing on Psalms 46 through uh, 8. And really, I uh, want to share that seventh verse, which says, Then said, then I said, here I am, I come. It is written about me in the scrolls. That's what Jesus uh, is saying here. Uh, David was the author of this song, but God, by his uh, Holy Spirit, interject a prophecy about Jesus, that it was written about him. And if you were listening to Sunday school this morning, the Sunday school teacher told you that no other uh, quote unquote religion talks about the coming of the Lord. And he told you that, but uh, in our Bible, it's said to be over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament about Jesus. And this is one of them, and Jesus said in the Old Testament that it is written about me. It's written about me. So we're going to look at this series. It's the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus at Christmas time, and uh, it was foretold for us to foretell that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Uh, almost nowhere else will you hear that uh, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Um, uh, many of the things that we do uh, leave Jesus out. H Hello, somebody. He's he's still locked in the manger. Hello, somebody. There's no room for him in many of our holiday uh, celebrations, but not in the church. Hello, somebody. It is our job to uh, forth tale about who Jesus is. And, and this series, we're going to uh, talk about foretold as a sanctified sacrifice that was Wednesday today we're going to talk about foretold as shunned and scorned uh, on December the 8th we're going to look at foretold as scarred and suffering and on December the 12th we're going to look at foretold as singing for the Savior and December the 15th we're going to look at foretold as a Savior siren December 19th, we're going to look at foretold as the spirit of this servant. December the 22nd, foretold as the sanctified sovereign. And on December the 26th, foretold as a shepherd savior. So uh, we are going to celebrate the Christmas uh, season the right way. And we're going to tell this world, tell this nation, tell Paul's Valley, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? Amen. I said Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? Uh, you know, I don't have anything against some of the other things that we do, especially what we do for the children's. Uh, but uh, we have to let the world know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Now, we're going to look at this prophecy this morning, Isaiah 53, uh, verse 5, would you stand in reverence to the word of God, stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word of God. Uh, let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. One, two, three. Amen and praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, we're going to share on around three points. The Holy Spirit gives us utterance, foretold to be pierced, foretold to be, uh, foretold to be what? Pulverized. Pulverized, foretold to be what? Punished. To be punished. Foretold to be what? Pierced, pulverized, pulverized and punished. Um, uh, our, our thesis this morning is that the death of Jesus was foretold for the price of Christian salvation. Let me say it again. The death of Jesus was foretold for the price of Christian salvation. Some folks say that salvation is free, but salvation was not free. Uh, our salvation was bought with a price. 
And our Savior had to suffer. See, when we get and let people think that salvation is free, they can walk around and think that there's nothing required of them. But when we know what the high price, uh, just like uh, if I'm wearing a $1,000 pair of shoes, which I probably would never in my life, even if I had a million dollars in the bank, I probably wouldn't buy a $1,000 shoes. Uh, but people walk different in a pair of $1,000 shoes. <laughs> Hello, somebody. They, they probably wouldn't want to walk through the grass and through the rain and all that in a a thousand dollar pair of shoes they treat it more precious and that's why we have to let folk know that the cost of our uh, salvation was what we're going to talk about this morning the suffering savior H hello somebody and, and that's why we can't live any old kind of way in jesus name and this also uh video is going to uh give you the right interpretation of this scripture because most people, uh, a lot of Christians believe that this is how they get healed by quoting this scripture. By his stripes, we are healed. And it takes this text out of context and it waters down the true meaning of this text. The stripes that, and the healing in this text is salvation. That's how we are healed. We are saved from our sin, saved from hell. That's that's how we're healed. H Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. So uh, we're going to look at this uh, brief video and then we'll get into the word. By his stripes we have been healed. And it's, it's coming out of Isaiah 53, verse 5. Um, and people have used that phrase to claim that because Jesus died on the cross, therefore we can expect to be healed in this life. Um, and that Jesus actually died for our physical healing in this life. And therefore, what's left is us for them to just appropriate what Jesus promised us. Well, we don't need to get into what Jesus has and hasn't promised us, but we can look at this, this, this phrase in context, and it's clear that Jesus, or that Isaiah was talking about the wound of sin, being healed of sin. It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, that with his stripes we are healed. The, what we need to be healed from, Isaiah is saying, is our sin. Not our physical, not not physical illness, which is how this verse is often applied. So our so our promise here is that because Jesus died on the cross, we can be healed from our sins. I mean, Jesus is death on the cross healed us from the or really delivered us, freed us from the punishment of our sin in the past. He is now in the process of delivering us from the power of sin in the present. And one day when he returns, he will save us from the present. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord. Uh, talk about this morning foretold as shunned and scorned. Foretold as shunned and scorned. Point number one, foretold to be pierced. The text says, but he was pierced for our trans." Aggression. He was pierced for our transgression. We're talking about this morning uh, about the suffering Savior, the suffering Savior. And that's why I said and began this conversation uh, saying that we must let folk know the high cost of their salvation. It was a high cost. For Jesus, the Son of God, to be pierced for our transgressions. 
Um, and we've uh, listened throughout the years of uh, trying to really get folk to understand this point. And I've heard it said that uh, uh, it would be like uh, me having compassion on a rat. On a rat. And uh, there is a infestation. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but there is an infestation of rats and mice that is happening. And it would be like me saying, oh, I have compassion for those little mice. I have compassion for those rats. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my only son. And he's going to, not only going to have to uh, manifest himself as a rat, uh, whoa, but it seemed like that's suffering enough, but he's going to have to suffer and die for the life of the rat. And, and I don't know anybody on planet Earth that would be willing to give up their human form, to be formed, uh, transformed into a rat, and not only that, to suffer and die. Seems like if I have enough compassion to get turned into a rat, oh, that's enough, but to suffer from the other rats, he hello somebody, for the, for the other rats to reject me, he hello somebody, to pierce me, and then I have to die for the very ones that are piercing and rejecting me. Hello, somebody. That's, for most of us, we can't even begin to understand that, but that's what happened. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But there's nowhere in that text that it says salvation is for free. There was a high cost, a very high cost. Oh, we can't even put a price on it. The highest number I know is trillions of dollars. We can't even put a price on the death of Jesus Christ for our sins. And this text this morning says that we, that, 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 that it, it foretold what was going to happen to him. He was pierced for our transgression, pierced for our transgression, not his own. Hello, somebody. We transgressed, we messed up, and he was pierced for all my mess ups. Hello, somebody. For my problems. For my mistakes, for my sin. H hello, somebody. Suffering Savior, that's the, uh, what we're talking about this morning. The Suffering Savior. Romans uh, 4 and 25 says he was delivered over to death for our trespasses. And was raised to life for our justification. Jesus, the suffering Savior, ah, who came and died for the sins of the world. That's what, ah, we celebrate during the holiday season. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the season. He came and he died for my and your transgression. Oh, I ain't got anything, uh, oh, about, uh, mad about anything about a tree or about lights or about movies during this time. But we've got to, as the people of God, more now than ever before, we've got to go and tell the story about who Jesus is. About who Jesus is. And if we could get this, if we could get this uh, as we were taking a survey, we take a survey for for uh, a loyalty month. I had a meeting last week uh, on this, and and, and 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 the Sunday school teacher asked me, asked really us, what what is the most important factor that that we need in our church? And both of us said, evangelism. What is evangelism, really? Evangelism is not even mentioned in the Bible. It's discipleship. Discipleship. The Great Commission is needed the most. 
if we would that this building be filled with sanctified saved folk oh we're gonna have to go out and tell about oh a lord who died for the transgression of our sins we're gonna have to go out and let the world know in the month of december that jesus is the reason for the season if we decided to be on fire and if oh people would be drawn to God oh by the time we hit Lord Timot in February of 2022 this place could be filled with folk that got saved and are being sanctified for the Lord if we would and if people would respond to the real reason for the season oh Jesus died for your trans and that's why, oh, we can't say that you, uh, and many folks will say, well, I got to get right first uh, before I come to church. Uh, no, you can't get right. You see, Jesus uh, was the one who got to get right, right. Uh, he died uh, for your transgression. That means you don't have to wait uh, to clean yourself up uh, to come to church. Uh, you don't have to stop smoking. Oh, to come to church. Uh, you don't have to stop drinking to come to church you don't have to clean up yourself all you gotta do is give your life to Jesus Christ and when you give your life to Jesus Christ oh he's already died for your transgression he's already died for that sin that's keeping you away from the household of the Lord you better come and come now in Jesus name because Jesus is the reason for the season. We've been praying that God would add disciples to our church. We've been praying that God would multiply disciples in our church. Oh, and if you've been holding out, trying to get right first before you come to the household of the Lord, I'm here to tell you, Jesus has already made it right. And he's why. Oh, you can be saved. Hello, somebody, because he was the one who was pierced. That means pain. You know, I've said many times before. It's one thing I hate is needles. I cannot stand needles. Really, it's not anything personal. Now, as long as the needle is over there minding his own business, me and needles are okay. You know, I, I'm not prejudiced against needles. The only problem that I have against needles uh, is when they try to uh, pierce me. Hello, somebody. <laughs> oh, and Jesus was pierced. H Hello, somebody. That mean it hurt. That mean there was pain involved. He was pierced uh, for our iniquity. That's why we can't take our salvation as being cheap. Uh, that's why I can't live uh, or oh, any kind of way as a Christian. I must uh, live a sanctified Christian life uh, because Jesus uh, was pierced uh, for my transgression and because he paid the price. Uh, the least I can do is live right is live right and the least I can do is tell others about Jesus hello somebody <laughs> talking about today foretold as shunned and scorned pulverized foretold as pulverized and that simply means the second part of that text he was crushed for our iniquity he was crushed for our iniquities. In my office there, I have some grapes. Uh, but I was eating this morning. Uh, and most of us know that in order to get wine, uh, you got to take the grapes. And you gotta what? You gotta crush him. Hello, somebody. 
Many of us grew up back in the day with uh, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball. I love Lucy. Many of us can remember the time she was at a winery and she got in a big pot full of, uh, of grapes and, and, and she stomped on those grapes. And it was a very hilarious time that she had stomping on those grapes. So much so that I remember it years later. But in order for grapes to become wine, they have to be crushed. Hello, somebody. And I can almost guarantee you being crushed doesn't feel good. Ooh, let me say that again. Being crushed doesn't feel good. And here I am, the Son of God came all to the world to save those rats. And to save those rats, I have to be pierced by rats. And I have to be what? Crushed by rats. Hello, somebody. So they say Jesus was crushed for our iniquities. Crushed for our iniquities. Had not he had been crushed, we would not have the sweet wine of salvation. Ooh, let me say that again. Had he not been crushed, we wouldn't have the sweet wine of salvation. We would not be able to celebrate this holiday season the true way that Jesus is the reason for the season. And we would not be able to have this truth of life that could save those who would respond as we go out and tell others about Jesus. He was pulverized for us. Hello, somebody. That means a lot more than saying oh, salvation is free. It's free. All you got to do is free. Free. No, salvation wasn't free. This was the cost. This was the cost. Piercing and being pulverized. This was the cost. That's why I can't live any kind of way as a Christian. That was a high price. Oh, for my Christianity, it was a high price. And I deserve to give God my all because he gave his all. In Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 3 says, For what I received, I pass on to you as a first importance. That Jesus died for our sins. According to the scripture, Jesus died for our sins. He was pierced. He was, uh, oh, pulverized. He, he died for our sins. And Jesus is the reason for the season. This is very important for the life of our church. If we would for a revival to happen, we have to be able to tell others as we leave this place that Jesus died for our sins. Salvation is not free. You've got to give up everything, your all, your will, all of it. For the Bible tells us as Christians to love him with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and might. That's true Christianity. He was pierced. He was pulverized. And last least I keep us too long. Punished. Punished. Wait a minute. What did he do? You know, I, uh, I, I have somewhat of a problem. about parents um, having to suffer for what their kids have done. Hmm. And, and, and for the first time in history, th th this young man mm -hmm. killed those five. And for the first time in history, the parents were arrested. Now, it seems to be a different and unique kind of case, okay, that they may have played a, 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 a greater role than any of the other's parents in the past. 
Um, and this is why they uh, have been arrested because uh, uh, they, they played a, a greater role in. But, but most of the time, parents will not be held accountable for what their children do. Okay. Okay. And, and, and that reminded me of what's happening in this case. It's almost like Jesus is the parents that's being held accountable for the sins of the children. Hello, somebody. Let me say it again. It's almost like Jesus is the parent who's being held accountable for the sins of the children. And, and that's the only way that you can be saved is, is that Jesus be held accountable for our the children of the future saints, the future Christians, is that Jesus had to be pierced. Jesus had to be pulverized. Uh, and Jesus had to be punished for what I did and for what you did. He has to pay the price. They say those parents are in the same jail that the son is in. Jesus was put in the same jail that all oh, that future Christians would be. Hello, somebody. Because he was held accountable for our transgressions. He was pierced. He was pulverized. And he was punished for our transgressions. And it don't seem right and it don't seem fair. In the same way, it don't seem right for parents because no parents in their right mind want their child to go out and kill folk. Hello, somebody. In their right mind. And, and, and most parents would be crushed that their children went out and done that and shamed uh, and feel pitiful and uh, feel, oh, uh, uh, feel helpless because no parents uh, teach their children, no parents in their right mind teach their children to go out and kill folk. Hello, somebody. But Jesus had to die, had to be punished for what we did what we did so the text says the punishment that brought us peace hello somebody his punishment brought us peace hello somebody and was on him and by his wounds uh, we are healed uh, and that's what it's talking about salvation uh, by his wounds uh, we are healed salvation uh, not healing in this physical body you see because uh, I can be healed uh, in this physical body and guess what next week I can be sick again uh, oh but this healing by these stripes uh, we are healed uh, and when we're healed uh, with salvation Oh, the devil can't take uh, salvation away. Uh, he can take uh, healing away. I can be healed of cancer this week uh, and get cancer next year or the year after that because cancer is known to come back. Uh, but I tell you, this kind of healing, and that's what sets it apart from physical healing. When you're healed uh, with salvation, when she lost, uh, heals you uh, with salvation, nobody can take your salvation away. The devil in his hips uh, can't touch your soul no more. Uh, he might be able to touch your body, uh, but he can't touch uh, your soul anymore. When you're healed uh, of this kind of healing, when you truly have uh, true salvation, oh, you're healed uh, for eternity. You're healed for eternity. But the way you got healed huh, is Jesus had to be punished, pulverized. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. And pierced. That's why I can't take this lightly. That's why I can't take this lightly. First Peter 2 and 24 puts it this way. He himself bore our sins in his body 
on the tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And this is why we say salvation was not free. Jesus didn't get pierced, polarized, hello somebody, and punished so that you can live any old kind of way. It says so that we might die to sin. And one of the ways you know that you are saved is as you go in Christ, you get worse and worse with sinning. Hello, somebody. You change. There's a folk who, who've been in the church for 40 years and have never changed. And they say, I, I was born this way. Yes, you were born this way, but guess what? You weren't born again to stay that way. Ooh, I said something there. I, I was born this way. But if you are saved, if Jesus Christ died for your sins, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you may have been born that way, but you weren't born again to stay that way. It says so that we might die to sin. We die to sin at Christians. And live to righteousness. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. So that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And guess what? Then by his stripes, I am healed. Folk, uh, so oh, want to be healed in the physical body, but they don't want to be healed spiritually. Want to be healed in a physical body that's going to die anyway. He hello, somebody. Unless you are resurrected, when Christ comes again, you're going to die anyway. And most likely you're going to get sick and die. Hello, somebody. Which, which means you can be healed over and over in this life. And it's only temporary. Hello, somebody. And what you need to be concerned about is true healing. The true healing of your soul, which evidence itself in living righteous. Are you living righteous? Are you living holy unto the Lord? Oh, because if you are, that means you have truly been saved. And by his stripes, ha, you've truly been healed. Ha, an eternal healing. Oh, a true salvation. Have you really been healed? Ha, oh, has his stripes ha, really healed you? And the only way we know is through righteousness. It's how you're living. How you're living. Like I've said throughout this time, that, 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 uh, that 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 uh, COVID nineteen is, is separating some 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 wheat from the tear yeah. because when folk, when folk had to uh, uh, had to make the decision to come to church or die, that's the way they looked at it. That's the way they looked at it. It may not have been true, but that's the way they looked at it. To come to church, I'd rather stay home. And live than to come to church and die. I'm so glad Jesus didn't think that way. Hello, somebody. Let me say that again. I'm so glad Jesus didn't think that way. Jesus could have said, I'm going to stay in heaven. Oh, and live. I don't want to go down now to the earth, turn myself into a rat, and be all oh, pierced by the rats, pulverized by the rats, and punished by the rats. I can stay in heaven. As opposed to go down there on earth and die. Ooh. Ooh. And be the price. For their sins, this is something that I ain't even done. I'm going to go and live uh, on the earth uh, as a rat, but have no rat-like tendencies. Ooh. Hell, somebody. I'm going to be a rat, but I ain't going to have any rat-like tendencies. 
Because I have to be the perfect sacrifice. Hello. 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 Church. If our church is going to live another century, it's up to us to do two things. The first thing is, is to make sure that our soul is healed. To make sure that by his stripes uh, that we have soul salvation. That's number one. By his stripes. Uh, that's the only way uh, we can be healed uh, with soul salvation. Oh, coming to church or not being healed by his stripes. Coming to Sunday school in the sanctuary or on Zoom is not an indication that your soul has been healed. The only and true indication is, is you've accepted Jesus Christ for the price and the penalty of your sins, that you believe that he died for your sins, that he was the suffering Savior and died for your sins, was buried and raised again on the third day. All eyes closed, heads of our saints of praise. Eyes closed, heads are bowed, saints are praying. Because this is a time that we have to truly respond. Is your soul healed? He said, preacher, how, how will I truly know? I'm glad you asked. The way you truly know that your soul has been healed is that you are dying to sin. You're not becoming a better sinner. You're becoming a worse sinner. And that you are concerned about living righteously in this world. Not being religious and doing all the right outward appearances. But living holy and righteous unto the Lord. Even in a world that has turned against God. People will fill up a football stadium, but afraid to come to church now. Ooh -wee, that's the evil world that we live in. Have you truly given your life to Jesus Christ? Has your soul truly been saved? Another indication of soul salvation is that you're concerned about others being saved. It's on your heart. It's on your mind. It's, you're concerned about your coworkers. You're concerned about your neighbors. You're, you're, you're praying for them. You're asking and beseeching God for an opportunity to share. Uh, that, and, and that you, when you get a chance, you speak up for Jesus. Is that a part of your life? Somebody that has true soul salvation is concerned about the souls of others. All eyes closed, heads about saints are praying. Have you truly given your life to Jesus Christ? Do you truly know and have been living that Jesus is the reason for the season? Do you want the kingdom of God to advance in Paul's Valley? Do you believe that God can save do you believe that God can save and fill this church with sanctified believers and not religious people? Then that's a sign that you have been saved. And if you have, if you, if you can't identify with what I'm saying, then you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You need your soul to be saved. Is there one today? Sip out of your seat right now. Come forth and we will pray what I like to call the saints prayer, not the sinner's prayer, the saints prayer where you give your life to Jesus Christ. Is there one today? Is there one? Is there one?
Slip out of your seat. I've run out of time, so I don't have moments to tarry. So we always like to say or have said in the past that this is the time that we open the doors of the church. But really, the doors of the church is open always. And that's what we have to get my, our mindset around. You can come and talk to me about your soul salvation at any time. After we give the benediction, you can call me on the phone. Anytime you can come to know him. And we want you to know that before I give this closing prayer. Anytime is the time of salvation. In Walmart, at the gym, in the neighborhood, any anytime is the time of salvation because Jesus is the reason for the season. And we make time for soul salvation in Jesus' name. As I said, we are out of time. But we need to enter into the time of the Lord's Supper. Would you please stand? Go ahead and open up the emblems. As you're opening up the emblems, we know that the bread is symbolic of his body. And the wine is symbolic of Jesus being pulverized or crushed. His blood, which is mighty to save. And if we take this Lord's Supper, we're saying that by his stripes, we've been healed. We've been saved by his stripes. We've been healed. And as a result, we obey the word of God, which says to do this in remembrance of me. And we do this in remembrance that this world is not our home. Let me say that again. I think sometimes we, we don't have the right focus. This world is not our home. And I'm glad about it. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in our world today. I'm glad this world is not my home. And that I'm just passing through. But I do this as a memory that Jesus is coming again, to be reminded that Jesus is coming again. Holding up the bread, which is symbolic of his body. Take, eat. Holding up the cup, which is symbolic of his blood. Take, drink. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, Father, that, oh Lord, your word says by your stripes uh, we've been healed, uh, which means, Lord, today we can celebrate our soul salvation. Today we can celebrate uh, that this world uh, is not our home. Today uh, we can celebrate uh, that we are just passing through. Uh, today we can celebrate uh, that Jesus is the reason for the season and we can leave this place uh, and go out and tell a lost uh, and dying world about uh, Jesus. And we can expect uh, soul salvation salvation of men and women who do not know him. We can expect uh, that our church uh, will grow uh, in Jesus' name. Put your head, your protection around us. Uh, keep us safe from all harm and danger until we meet again. And the people of God said, Amen. And praise the Lord, you are dismissed. And may God bless you and keep you is my prayer. If you haven't filled your uh, in inventory or survey out. Make sure you give that to Maury before you leave. God bless you. We're praying for those who are traveling this week as well. You are dismissed and thank you for your service in the household of the Lord. In Jesus name. Amen.